Hello, everyone. I am Kyung Wan Do from Professor Carl Berggren's group. And today, I will be doing a presentation on templated self-assembly of block copolymer thin films under lithographic confinement. This work was supported by National Science Foundation, NSF, and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC. So in this project, there were two major goals. The first goal was to achieve geometries useful for integrated circuit layouts, such as 90-degree bands and T-junctions using lithographic confinement of block copolymers. The second goal was to develop a new pattern generation technique based on interactions between lithographically confined block copolymers. I will explain the second major goal in detail later in the presentation. So I will start by explaining briefly what lithographic confinement of block copolymer is. So without any guiding patterns, block copolymers naturally form fingerprint patterns which have very poor long-range order. To improve that long-range order, uh, lithographic confinement is used to guide the self-assembly of the patterns. One-dimensional confinement is used to achieve parallel lines, as we can see in the left SEM image. This is the most commonly used type of lithographic confinement. And, and two-dimensional confinement is used to achieve ring-shaped structures. This is shown in the top right SEM image. Finally, three-dimensional confinement is used to achieve concentric spheres, as shown in the bottom right TEM image. In my presentation, I will focus on two-dimensional confinement. Here, uh, we pattern the we pattern the template or the lithographic confinement using electron beam lithography of hydrogen sesquioxane or HSQ resist. We functionalized the template with hydroxyl terminated polystyrene PS brush. Then we spin coded cylindrical morphology PS PDMS block copolymer, solvent annealed it, and reactive ion etched it to expose oxidized PDMS line patterns. So these figures show the commensurability conditions. When the center to wall distance r is equal to an integer plus half multiple of the equilibrium periodicity L0 plus the brush thickness TPS, we will achieve concentric rings with the center sphere. When the center to wall distance r is equal to an integer multiple of the equilibrium periodicity L0 plus the brush thickness TPS, we can achieve concentric rings with no center sphere. So for the experiment, we used 45 kilogram per mole cylindrical morphology PSPDMS block copolymer. We solvent anneal the block copolymer film in beaker for five hours using a five to one mixture of toluene and heptane. The equilibrium periodicity L0 was about 37 nanometers plus minus two nanometers. We first tried circular confinement. As expected, we observed uh, well-ordered concentric ring, ring shapes. In the left SCM image, we can observe two concentric rings with the center sphere. In the right SCM image, we can observe six concentric rings or six concentric rings with the center sphere. Both, uh, both patterns are observed in the same template because the equilibrium periodicity L0 can vary between 35 nanometers and 39 nanometers. Next, we tried hexagonal confinement. Similar to circular confinement, we observed well-ordered concentric hexagonal ring shapes. Uh, one thing to note is that the outermost ring is hexagonal shape because it is directly affected by the hexagonal template. However, the inner rings become more circular in shape because hard bending angles are difficult to achieve and energetically unfavorable compared to smooth bending angles. So here we can check that the block copolymer patterns are formed starting from the outside and ending in inside. Next, we tried pentagonal confinement. 
similar to circular confinement and pentagonal con uh, similar to circular confinement and hexagonal confinement, we observed well-aligned, well-ordered concentric pentagonal ring shapes. Again, the outermost ring was pentagonal shaped, but the inner rings became more circular in shape. Also, in the right SCM image, we can see a spiral shaped effect that's quite interesting. And next, we tried triangular confinement. Uh, unlike the previous cases, circular confinement, hexagonal confinement, and pentagonal confinement, we observed bar-shaped structures instead of concentric triangular rings. Sometimes the bars were parallel to one of the three sides, as shown in the left SCM image. Sometimes the bars were a combination of smaller bars, which were parallel to one of the three sides, as shown in the right SCM image. So for circular confinement with 180 degrees bending angle, hexagonal confinement with 120 degrees bending angle, and pentagonal confinement with 108 degrees bending angle, we observed well-aligned and well-ordered concentric ring shapes. For triangular confinement with 60 degrees bending angle, we observed parallel bars or parallel lines. So next, we wanted to check what would happen to square confinement where the bending angle was 90 degrees, which lies between triangular confinement and pentagonal confinement. So here are the results. For square confinement, we observed bar-shaped structures similar to the triangular confinement. However, unlike the triangular confinement, the bar-shaped structures were well-ordered and well-aligned, in either in horizontal direction or vertical direction. For uh, starting with a confinement size of 100 nanometers, we observed two bar structure, which is simply just a square ring. And as we increased the confinement size from 100 nanometers, uh, a center sphere formed in the middle, and it was eventually connected to the outer ring, forming an additional bar and eventually resulting in three bar structure. As we increased the confinement size more and more, we observed additional bar formation. And this led to four bar structure shown in the left SEM image and five bar structure shown in the right SEM image. As we, as we increased the confinement size even more, we observed six bar structure shown in the left SEM image and seven bar structure shown in the right SEM image. Even for six bar and seven bar structures, we still observe very good long range order and very good alignment. Finally, for a confinement size of about 300 nanometers, we observed eight bar structures. Even for a large confinement size of 300 nanometers, we still observed very good ordering and very good alignment. In the magnified SCM image, we can clearly see the T-junctions formed in the middle and the 90-degree bands formed at each of the four corners. So we observed that using uh, square confinement, we can achieve bar-shaped structures that are aligned horizontally or vertically. However, it would be more useful if we could control the orientation of the bar-shaped structures and decide whether it's aligned horizontally or vertically. Previously in our group and Professor Caroline Ross's group, we have used uh, a dense array of dashes and posts to achieve such control of alignment orientation. On the top, we can see that posts and dashes were used to make 90 degrees bending angles. And in the bottom, we can, achieve, we can see that a dense array of posts was used to achieve T-junctions at certain locations. However, we wanted to control the alignment orientation by just using the confinement geometry and not using posts or dashes. So one way to achieve control of alignment orientation is to, use, is to change the aspect ratio of the square confinement. In these diagrams, we can see a rectangular confinement with an aspect ratio of 2 to 1. Because both sides are an integer multiple of the equilibrium periodicity L0, 
The blockopolymer cylinders can align both horizontally, as shown in the left, and vertically, as shown in the right. When the blockopolymer cylinders are aligned horizontally, uh, for n equals 4, there will be four 90-degree bands formed at each of the four corners, and four T-junctions formed in the middle. When the blockopolymer cylinders are aligned vertically, uh, we can observe four 90-degree bands at each of the four corners and 12 T-junctions in the middle. Comparing the two, we can see that the left side has eight less T-junctions. And we already know that T-junctions are energetically unfavorable, so we expect that between the two possible orientations, the blockopolymer cylinders will be always aligned horizontally and parallel to the longer side as shown in the left. So we experimentally verified that, and here are the results. Uh, for, the con for a confinement size of 200 nanometers, we observed two bar structures, which is simply a rectangular ring. And as the confinement size was increased, an additional bar was formed in the middle, and we observed three bar structures. Uh, unlike the square confinement results, the bar-shaped structures were aligned in the same direction, parallel to the longer side, in the horizontal direction. And as we increased the confinement size more and more, we observed, more, we observed additional bars, and we observed four bar structures shown in the left SCM image and five bar structures shown in the right SCM image. For both cases, the bar-shaped structures were perfectly aligned in the horizontal direction, parallel to the longer side. And as we increased the confinement size even more, we observed six bar structures and seven bar structures, where both structures were perfectly aligned in the horizontal direction. Finally, for a confinement size of 600 nanometers, we observed eight bar structures. Here, even for a very large confinement size, uh, the bar shaped structures were aligned very well and had very good long-range order, aligned perfectly in the horizontal direction. So another way to control the alignment direction is to change the bangle, bend, bending angle instead of changing the aspect ratio. So here we can see that uh, trapezoid shape with a bending angle of 70 degrees well aligned in horizontal direction. In the magnified SCM images, we can see uh, 70, deg 70 degrees bending angle and 70 degrees T-junctions, as well as 80 degree bending angle and 80 degrees T-junctions. So previously I've used 2 to 1 aspect ratio, rectangular confinement. However, this phenomena works for any, any number of aspect ratios. So I've tried 1.38 and 1.59 aspect ratio. So in fact, this will work even better than using an integer aspect ratio, because in this case we can change the, we can tune the confinement size so that the confinement size is commensurate in one direction and not commensurate in the other direction. So for both cases, we can see perfect alignment in the horizontal direction. And this phenomena works for different block, different molecular weight blockopolymers as well. So the previous results were uh, made achieved by using 45 kilogram per mole molecular weight PSPDMS. So here we can see similar bar-shaped structures but, uh, achieved by using 53k 53 kilogram per mole blockopolymer PSPDMS blockopolymer. So we can say that this phenomena works for any type of cylindrical morphology blockopolymers. So here, we, I've uh, colored uh, horizontally aligned bar-shaped structures in blue and vertically aligned bar-shaped structures in red. Looking at this image, uh, two questions arise. So first, we want to answer whether uh, the alignment direction is tru truly random, 50% horizontal and 50% vertical. And second, we want to answer the question of whether there is interaction between neighboring squares. We want to see if uh, if the shape of bars, the alignment orientation of the bars of one square confinement is affected by the four neighboring square confinements. 
So first, to answer the question of the random distribution, uh, we've fabricated 10, 10 by 10 array of square confinements and measured 600 uh, orientations of the bar-shaped structures. So, so among the 600, 600 square confinements, 51.5% were aligned horizontally. I will call them zero. And 48.5% were aligned vertically. I will call them one. So the distribution is roughly 50-50. So we can say that the alignment direction is truly random. Another thing to check is whether there are any interactions between neighboring square confinements. So for each square confinement, there are four neighboring squares as indicated by the dashed line in the SEM image. So, each, so uh, for each square, the four neighboring squares can have five possible outcomes. So there, the four neighboring squares can be four zeros and zero ones, three zeros and one ones, one one, two zeros and two ones, one zero and three ones, zero zeros and four ones, as shown in the left column of the table. So for each case, I counted the distribution of the center square confinement. And we can see from the table that for each case, the distribution of the horizontally aligned bar-shaped structures and vertically aligned bar-shaped structures is roughly 50-50. So we can say that there are no interactions or very little interaction between the neighboring squares. And we did another experiment to check that there are very little interaction between the neighboring square confinements. So here I've colored, uh, here the red color indicates that the two adjacent square confinements have the same alignment direction. And blue color indicates that the two neighboring square confinements have different alignment directions. So the left square confinement can have zero, can be either zero or one, and the right side, the right square confinement can either be zero or one. So there are four possible outcomes, or five possible outcomes, in, including defects. So uh, for each of the four cases, I've measured the distribution and we found that the, the distribution is roughly 25% for each outcome. And the phi correlation coefficient, which measures the correlation between two discrete random variables, is equal to 0 0.0227, uh, which means that there is very, there's no interaction or very little interaction between the neighboring square confinements. So in conclusion, we've achieved 90 degree bands and T-junctions, or any angled bands and angled T-junctions using lithographic confinement of block polymers. Also, we achieved uh, control of orientation of T-junctions by changing the bending angles or changing the aspect ratio. And finally, uh, we will study interactions between neighboring confinement block polymers by making an opening in the middle of two adjacent square confinements. Finally, I would like to end the talk by thanking the funding sources, National Science Foundation, NSF, and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC. And also, I would like to thank the people who helped me with the research, Jim Daly, Mark Mondor, Mondol, Amir, Sam, Richard, Vitor, and Wubin. Thank you for listening, and for more information or if you have any questions, feel free to contact me via email. And thank you very much.